Hello, and welcome to this segment of Under the Microscope. I'm Jeff Golden. Thank you so much for being with us today. I have the pleasure of being joined by Dean Courtney Fletcher, and of course, as we know, Dean Fletcher is the Dean of our College of Pharmacy. Courtney, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Chancellor. I'm happy to be here. So as, uh, as I recall, we're a little over two months since the beginning of this new digital campus project in the College of Pharmacy that rolled out the beginning of this academic year. And I know when we were going into it, there was a lot of excitement by the students and the faculty and the staff. I know you were very excited about it. How's it been going? Well, it, it's really gone great. The new uh, component of our uh, transition this year was to provide all 240 of our students uh, the newest generation of the iPad. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it's another part in our transition toward active and uh, digital learning. The, uh, the students are using them in ways exactly as we had envisioned uh, to access information anytime, anywhere, uh, to be able to um, get the, you know, their notes uh, before they come to class so they can engage more in active learning as opposed to just trying to get down, uh, you know, get down facts. And not surprisingly, the, the students have uh, used those devices uh, in some good ways that we hadn't quite uh, envisioned. So overall, we are just really uh, happy with where we are in the transition. After all, they are, as we say in the trade, digital natives. <coughs> they are. Uh, Technology is much more their friend uh, than it is for some of us uh, uh, older folks. And so how's it gone with the faculty and the staff? I think the, f the, the faculty have, have really bought into this grade. Um, one, you know, it is something new. And so I want to thank them all for their willingness uh, to engage uh, in this transition um, with us. Um, the faculty have also stepped up to improve their technology skills. Right sure. now, Chancellor, we have about 40% of our faculty who are engaged in this advanced Apple learning initiative mm -hmm. that's going on on campus right wow. now. And that, and that says something about their willingness to use this new technology as well. But I, I think for the faculty, what this transition really helps to do is for them to make our students better problem solvers. So rather than coming to class to learn facts, they can learn the facts before they come to class and then come to class to learn how to be problem solvers. And that's really what I think we want to try to do in healthcare sure. general, but certainly in pharmacy. Prepare our students to be better problem solvers for the medication therapy problems that patients are going to have. Well, and that really is what drives us, as you know. It's because the technology is just a tool. It's an instrument to help us create the best educational programs we can. And, you know, healthcare changes at such an incredible pace these days, particularly uh, in the area of pharmaceutical sciences, that how one learns and continues to maintain knowledge and skill becomes a really important part of it. And if the technology can help them become more creative and uh, insightful learners, we, we really are changing the world. I think that's right. I, you know, clearly there's still facts we all need to know as a, health, as a healthcare professional. But just what you said, they change. The, the drugs, for example, that our students learn about today will not be those drugs that they are using in 10 years and in 20 years. So it's preparing them to know where to get the facts, um, but then how to use those facts, as I've mentioned, to solve uh, therapy problems for patients. So uh, what do you think is the next step in all of this? Well, I think the next step is really this continuation of, of active learning. As one example, because all of our students now have a common platform that they use, uh, we can tie into the simulated electronic medical record as mm -hmm. an example. Yep. So that allows us to build cases uh, of fairly real, but of course not quite uh, patients for the students you know, to, you know, to learn from. So I think it's taking scenarios that are happening um, really, in reality, mm -hmm. and use those as learning tools. So, so better case-based learning. I think that's right. So when students get onto the, uh, into the hospital, when they get into the clinics, it's a much, it, it, it's an environment they're in a way a lot more familiar with than they had been in the past. So it's not a see one, do one, teach one kind of environment anymore. That's right, yeah. They'll, I think they're going, you know, they're going to be better, uh, better prepared than they have in the past. Well, congratulations, Courtney. It's a great job, and you know, we look forward to continued follow-up. I'm sure that some of the other colleges are going to be initiating similar programs uh, in the near future as well. Thanks for being with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today on this segment of Under the Microscope. <laughs>